OGL 2.0? Game Masters here, and Wizards has finally given a response to all of this OGL 1.1 that the D&D community has been up in arms about. I'm going to interject my own view and opinion here. Via D&D Beyond, they state that the revision of the OGL 1.1 had three major goals in mind. To prevent people from including in uh, hateful and discriminatory products, uh, to not allow it to be used in Web3, uh, blockchain games, and NFTs, and to ensure that the OGL is, and I quote, for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players, and the community, not major corporations to use for their own commercial and promotional purposes. The first two goals, I don't think most people would have an issue with. That third goal, however, is pointless. As a content creator, a home brewer, a designer, those three terms are all the same. Someone who is creating something for D&D, I, I don't need the OGL to do that. If I'm creating a, a hat of intellect to give to one of my players as a homebrew item in our weekly game, I don't need the OGL to do that. Players don't need the OGL to play the game, and neither does the uh, playing community at large. Their last point about not wanting major corporations to use it for their own commercial and promotional purposes, listen, again, the OGL wouldn't even apply there because a major corporation is going to have a completely different license agreement direct with Wizards of the Coast anyways. Further, they go on to explain that the reasons the OGL 1.1 had provisions in it addressing specific amounts of money and royalties, well, that was just an early draft. So that they, uh, yeah, wizards could get feedback that they could uh, consider before anything was finalized. Okay, again, this is being very disingenuine. This update fully admits that OGL 1.1 was an actual document. Oh, they may be trying to backpedal here, but ultimately OGL 1.1 was supposed to come out on, uh, what, January 6th, 5th? with it uh, going into, into effect uh, with a deadline agreement of today, January 13th. OGL 1.1 was never a draft, and this update confirms that because next it states, it's clear from the reaction that we rolled a 1. It has become clear that it is no longer possible to fully achieve all three goals while still staying true to our principles. They don't deny that OGL 1.1 was real because it was. And if it was real, it stands to reason that so were the initial dates that were also leaked. There is also this line. Our plan was always to solicit the input of our community before any update to the OGL. The drafts you've seen were attempting to do just that. That is such a line of BS. It was never to solicit input from the community before updating because, as mentioned, they already had key dates in mind to release OGL 1.1, and it was because of the leaks that we and, and you, the viewer, became aware of this. And now Wizards is going into revision mode. Had it not been leaked, well, we'd have OGL 1.1. This brings us to OGL 2.0. Another leaked document came out, evidently written by one of Wizards' attorneys, according to the metadata found within the file itself. It's called Frequently Asked Questions About the New Open Game License OGL, the New Systems Reference Document, SRD, and the Y, and has a metadata date uh, in the document of January 12, 2023. That's the date it was written. It reads, what is the OGL 2.0? OGL 2.0, like version 1.0a, is a license agreement between you and Wizards of the Coast to access the core rules of 5th edition D&D and 1 D&D in the future through the SRD. This allows you to directly use and reference the D&D rules contained in the SRD within your TRPG product, making your TRPG content compatible with 5th edition. It also states that they intend to release an updated SRD, uh, a system resource document, on January 16th and should also include things like the Artificer and other playable species. There is a section that addresses the leaks and tries to state that the leaked documents were drafts and admits that people have been upset about what was contained in OGL 1.1. Then this thing goes on to say, Creating any document this important, like creating any good campaign, is an iterative process. We draft, then look for ways that we've done that what we've done can be misread or misused and have unintended consequences. And then we find that and we change what we we've done to try to better hit the target we were aiming for in the first place. Except again, we've already heard that companies had to sign and agree to OGL 1.1 license earlier this month. You don't have people sign on the dotted line if it's just a draft. Guys, this this is the definition of backpedaling. Lastly, this OGL 2.0 fact leaked document says, bottom line, we're listening and learning and we'll continue doing that. Not because loud voices made us, but because it's what we always plan to do and we're already doing. 
that's the only way to do something like this well. Again, I'm going to call BS on this. Listen, if this was the plan all along, here's what would have happened. They would have given an announcement months ago uh, with the concept something like, uh, we need to update the OGL to include three primary goals, uh, to limit hateful speech elements, uh, to prevent NFTs, and to look at a different license possibilities for larger entities that are making money off of our IP. And then keep an open dialogue with the community about the possibilities of what it all means. Instead, they tried to plop OGL 1.1 onto everyone with about 15 days notice to agree to it. Otherwise, you can't create content any longer. No, that was never anything they always planned to do. I'm not buying it. I'm thrilled to have seen that, uh, that Paizo and others are working on a truly open gaming license, and I'm beyond excited to see content creators adapt to that. But you know what? Maybe I'm just overreacting to all of this. Maybe Wizards really did have the best intentions for us all along. Uh, you know, the same company that wants to celebrate its 30th year of Magic the Gathering by trying to charge $999 plus tax and shipping for 60 non-tournament legal cards that cost them about 20 cents to make. Yeah, they, they have our best interests in mind. I'll leave a link to the documents referenced in this video down in the description. Feel free to check them out while the links are still valid, and tell me your thoughts about all of this down in the comments. Are you buying into it, or did we simply overreact? Until next our paths cross, let's see, <laughs> is there going to be an OGL 3.0?